Yes, why am I not in the Green Party? Why am I in the Liberal Party? I mean, it's very simple. Uh, the reason is simply because the Greens, they're great, but they're utopians. Whereas the Liberals, they are more, I think, concrete. Talking about the energy issue and talking about the environmental issues, uh, uh, coming, coming back to what Colin said earlier on, I mean, he, he mentioned future generation, he mentioned um, <coughs> economy uh, that has to be centered towards the people. Um, but I think uh, there are some realities that you cannot, uh, that has to be taken into account. For example, when you, when you talk about energy, talking about clean energy, I mean, you've got grids, you've got infrastructures that are there. And these infrastructures is not because you talk that you can change them. Uh, it takes time and it takes investment. And we all know that the economy, we all know that the business, there are people that are looking for immediate profit most of the time. So it's not, it's not you know, you don't have a, a, a magic wand that makes things just happen. You know, for you to have clean energy, they have to be um, able to be adapted into the system. And the system currently, the way they are, the infrastructures, the way they are today, uh, I mean, they're, they're not, they, they cannot fit into a, you know, new technology. So all of this takes time. You know, I mean, I totally understand it during this course, which has helped to improve um, the mindsets, uh, which has helped to, you know, shift the uh, political lines on these on these policies. But you know, uh, I mean, this thing takes more than the, the talking. Uh, it needs uh, political courage, but it also needs um, investment. And you know, so maybe that's where the difference comes in between the Greens and the Liberals because we're more practical, we're more concrete. And also to say that the green uh, green policies are not, you know, um, they're not only about people in the Green Party. Everyone thinks about the future generations. I mean, we all want to live in a clean world. We all want to live in a world where we breathe, you know, uh, clean air. Uh, you know, and it's in fact one of the areas that I'm dealing with: energy and um, and environmental issues in the European Union for nearly ten years now. So uh, yeah, why am I in the Liberal Party? That's. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I think I'm more, I'm more realistic. Ah, okay. So, Abdul, you're launching a debate, so you're more realistic. <laughs> Tell us, what are you going to do about this job situation? You heard this discussion. Yes, the job situation. Um, maybe, um, I think, um, among the candidates here, I think, uh, with all modesty, I think uh, I, I have um, a bit more experience about the European Union. Uh, that they're vying for, I'm, I'm vying for the, the, the opposite, the, the regional parliament. I mean, the European Union, I think, um, does not, it's not its responsibility in dealing with, with, um, with employment issues because, you know, because of subsidiarity, which means that, you know, these kind of issues have to be dealt with at the levels that are the, the most appropriate, which, uh, in the case of Belgium, is regional level. Um, so I think going for the European Union, what you people should be fighting for is to build trust upon the people, and it's to you know uh, it's it's to help to push the political line of the political of the of the, of the national governments to give the European Union more power, more power and more competencies uh, in terms of in terms of redistribution of, of of European money because currently as it stands the EU is mainly about about the button, it's mainly about uh, about the stick, you know, uh, because they have all the repressive instruments. They, are the con they, they control the people um, and they sanction when things go wrong. Um, and when things go right, the member states will say, "Oh, we've done it," you know. So I think uh, what you guys got to do when you get to the European Parliament is, right, is to try to build trust amongst the people and try to make the governments give more powers to the EU because I can tell you currently the European Union budget is about 146 billion euros every year and three quarters of that money goes back into the regions just to say that Europe passes or Europe is also about the regions because most of the money it gets goes back to the regions. So employment is about is, is a regional is the regional affairs, it's a regional matter uh, for any of the countries of the European Union. You know, whereas energy, for example, uh, and, and environmental issues are mainly uh, European European issues. So when you get there, build the trust. But the, on, in terms of the employment, we are going to do the job at the regional level, because as you all know, we've got a different in the system in Belgium, whereby the economic um, policies are in the hands of the regional government. So of course, when I get elected into the Brussels Parliament, uh, coming from the 
I, I was going to say coming from the woods, <laughs> I know what these issues are, despite the fact that I've been, I've been working on, um, in an international organization for the past 10 years now. Um, I think I know what the issues are, and I think it's, it's quite appalling the situation currently today, where Brussels region is a region in this country that produces the biggest wealth, but it is a region of the country where unemployment is the highest. You know, so it's 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 really it's really um it's really an amazing situation. And I'm talking about racism. Of course, indeed, there's racism. But I'm not going to talk about racism because I was going to say that you know, uh, just to say a little bit of myself. My mom is from Nigeria. My dad is from Guinea. Mainly looking at my name, you would think you would. I mean, it sounds more Guinean than more Nigerian. But I can tell you that I've been oh, I face more discrimination in Guinea than anywhere else in the world. So I think I'm not excusing discrimination or racism, but I think it's something that we have to look beyond. We have to look at meritocracy. Because if you have the values, if you have what it takes to get it, no one can say no to you. You know, of course it's your reality, people would find arguments to push you out of the system. But if you look at the unemployment market, the unemployment rates today in this country, I mean, it's not only about blacks, or about foreigners. Everyone is concerned because there was economic crisis in this country, all, in, all over the EU as well. You know, so um, it's a question that concerns everyone. But I'm going to tell you guys, do not discourage. Uh, keep fighting, and you guys are going to get there. Because, uh, uh, just a little example, for example, in the EU where I work, you know, talking about discrimination, when people come, because I'm a, I do give conferences about the EU affairs to people coming from different uh, parts of the EU, but usually when they come there, they see me, you know, they want to take pictures with me, because they're kind of like, Oh, you know, how did you get here? You know, so it's, sometimes it's the other way around, so. Now, Abdul, I have a question for you. We are all here sitting here, and we're totally amazed by you. You know, we're absolutely charmed. Tell us, what are you going to do when we elect you? What issues are you going to fight for? I know you've said that you're more realistic, you're better things, but actually, you haven't told us exactly what it is that you are championing. Okay, a uh, very good question indeed. That's the reason why I'm here, I suppose. Oh, I, I'm certain. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so the, the first thing is that you know the you know government is about making choices in uh, you know in society, uh, and so one of the first things I'm going to defend is housing. I think the situation of housing in this country is totally uh, is totally appalling, and we hear there are no socialists around here, unfortunately. But we hear the socialist government in power. They've been in power for 25 years, you know, continuously. And they come now to tell us that they want to tax rents. Saying that by taxing rents, you're taxing the rich. I think that's a stupid policy. It's even a stupid thing to say because if you tax rents, you're not taxing the rich man, you're taxing the poor man because the landlord is going to repercute the, um, the, uh, the tax. On the, on the rent. So in the end, it's the, you know, it's the, it's the person renting the house that's going to have to pay that tax. So for me, when I get into the parliament, I'm going to say no to that policy. That's number one. And number two, for people like Emmanuel sitting right in front of me, who is a man, a very brave man, who wakes up very early in the morning, who is very, very hard working, who invests and takes risks in creating a business, and then he gets all of the administrative burdens, he gets all of the heavy taxation, as you all know, it's not a secret that Belgium is, the, is one of the countries where we are the most highly taxed. Uh, so, when we get into power, uh, when I get into power, what I'm going to defend is people like you, standing out there, taking risks, uh, wanting to make things happen, wanting to create jobs. We will, be able, we will give incentives to people like you to be able to stand on your own so that you don't fall back into the unemployment system so that you don't fall back into benefits because you are better off having your own job and making your own decisions by your own self. So we're going to give incentives to people like you, to SMEs, to stand, you know, by, on their own. That's, that's the second point. And then the third point is about, um, uh, is about education. You know, in the past 10 years, in the regional government, we've been in the opposition. Um, and education is a regional competence in Belgium, or a community competence. Um, there's what we call the decret inscription, which means that, you know, like I have a daughter who's about four years old and she cannot go to the school right in front of where we live simply because of the stupid system that wants, you know, to mix 
different categories of the society, uh, you know, you know, baselessly, I would say, which makes that my daughter having the school right in front of her cannot go to that school, or rather she would have to go to a school that's far away. So what we're saying to that is that that is totally unacceptable. You cannot build a society without the people. If you have schools, you have to trust. You have to trust the teachers. You have to trust the people with whom you've, um, to whom you've given, you know, those those um, those responsibilities. Because for me, society is about trust, and government is all, is all about the people, and the people have to be heard. So when we get into power, we're going to say no to that system. Because you know, during our own times, when I was going to the university, we were very happy going to the university because we we're like, oh, it's very difficult talking about discrimination. Of course, when they see where you come from, your origin, they tend to, you know, want to. Make you go through, I wouldn't call it discrimination, but the tougher, you know, through tougher, tougher times than maybe others, uh, because you have less defense system. Um, you know, when we went to university, we were like very happy. We know we're not going to get maybe the best job, but we know that when we get out there, we're going to get something. But it's not the case today. You know, when I go out into the into the into the neighborhoods, you know, uh, I see people, I see students, I see youngsters, and they're like, yeah, why do I go to university? Because in any case, I wouldn't even get a job. You know, and I tell them that, you know, you guys are wrong. But it's not their fault. It's the fault of these guys who have been in power for 25 years, non-stop. <coughs> and this coalition that's been in power at the regional level for 10 years that haven't done nothing. So by putting us in power, by voting into parliament on the 25th of May, we'll change the system for the better. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Abdul is all yours. He's all yours. You have something, you have a bone to chew with him, you want to take him up on anything he has said, you have a question for him, you would like him to clarify something, you want to vote for him, you want to shake his hand, go for it. Yeah, this question is for you. The liberals are always associated with riots. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Liberals are always associated with riots. riots. Please explain yourself. Yes. In most countries in Europe, when you interview guys engaged in riots, they tell you they are liberals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if your party has a solution to that. Okay. Uh, would you like to take that one out? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very I'm very happy to hear that question because first of all you'll <laughs> I've just learned something from you because I I didn't know that people who, <laughs> who riot or liberals but that's you know uh, good to know but what solution do we have for it? Um, <laughs> you, you, you usually in London people tend to take the liberals to be you know the rich guys the guys you know on the on the other side, so this is the first time I'm hearing that we're, we're people supporting riots. But no, I, I think we'll, 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 the liberals are people who call for the respect of the rule of law, whatever it is. Because once one, once a law has been has been has been adopted, we believe that it has, it has to be respected, whether we like it or not. So um, that that's our line. I, I mean, there's nothing more I can I can add to it. Other than that, there's the police force to um, enforce. Um, you know, whatever situation that, that, that takes place, and then, you know, the right of riot is a constitutional right, as far as it goes according to the, to the rules laid down <laughs> by the Constitution. The, the problem with Brussels is that, you know, uh, the, uh, there's a huge unemployment rate in the, in the region, um, and the reason for it is because most of the people are dropouts, um, and they don't, you know, master, even the French language that they, that they tend to learn, at school, they don't even master it very well. And then the other thing is that process is very, very competitive in terms of, you know, because everybody comes here and they come here with lots of, you know, <coughs> very, very highly qualified people ready to take up jobs that are not, you know, of their of the normal levels. So what we're going to do is that we will try to, um, you know, those guys who drop out of schools, try to take them and, and, and retrain them by having a, a, a public-private partnership with um, the equivalent of the VDAB. Uh, in Brussels, uh, you know, by having kind of internships in companies so that they're able to learn. Because another problem is that some people have come from families that have, you know, other parents having never worked because they've always given social benefits uh, to, to, you know, throughout those periods. So 
uh, one thing is, is training these people, you know, making them up to date um, in terms of in terms of their knowledge, in terms of um, skills, um, and then and then secondly, of course, it's you know uh, it's to condition benefits because Belgium is a country. It's one of the it's one of it's, I think even the only country in the world where when you drop out of school after nine months without having worked, you get unemployment benefits. So I think I think I think that's um, I think that's 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 not that's not normal. That's not right. So we would condition having benefits to doing something, and that's what I call uh, res uh, that's that, that's what I call solidarity, responsible solidarity. Because if if society is responsible towards you, it's been, it's been you know it shows solidarity. You have to show at least you know uh, that you too want to you, know, you want to come back into the system. It's like a family. Once Papa or Mama cook something and put on the table. I mean, after eating, the kids have to you know help so you know take off the dishes. You know, I think society at a large level scale has to be like that. You know, so we would have to condition benefits to uh, to doing something and not just being there without doing anything.